Hi everyone, it is Natalie from Being Intentionally Creative. Today we're going to do a video on my computer because it's the easiest way for me to do this next demonstration. I have been playing with the washi tape some more and I have learned a few things that I want to share with you and different ways you can use it and I also want to show you how you can use ribbon in some of your artwork. I have a lot of ribbon and I've been trying to come up with different ways that I can incorporate it into my artwork. I'm not getting as far with that as I'd like to, but I do have an idea for it that goes along the lines with the washi tape. Let's get started. I have wood blanks here at home and I had bought some because I wanted to make earrings. Basically I had created some artwork and I wanted to use that artwork to make earrings. Instead of just doing a basic resin earring, I wanted to add some dimension to it. I had done some artwork using a jelly plate and basically I'd come up with some really cool ideas and I thought, well, let's make these into earrings so that I wasn't just using resin for my earrings. And we'll do something in regards to that later on and I'll show you some of the pieces that I've done in a later video of the earrings I've made. Because I was so wrapped up in the whole washi tape scenario product, I took one of these and I worked on putting washi tape on it. Now you'll notice this doesn't look very good and there's a reason for that. I had actually covered both sides of this and you'll notice that this side isn't covered anymore. The one thing I'm going to point out is and I probably should have known this, but again, I played and I've learned. Don't use removable tape, double-sided tape, if you're going to put UV resin anyway on top of it, because what has happened is, or what did happen was, this had been attached, but because of the UV resin, and I'm guessing the heat that was generated when I put it under the UV lamp, it actually started pulling this away and got to the point where, well, here you go. It's no longer around the piece of wood. So lesson number one, if you're going to use a double-sided tape, make sure to use a permanent double-sided tape. It's stronger and I found that it's not going to pull this off your wood plank. The other thing I had thought about was what if I had sanded this? I didn't sand these before I started. All I did was take my double-sided removable tape, put it down, put the washi tape on top of it, and then put the UV resin on top of that. Now I will admit part of my other issue with this could very well have been that I put too much UV resin on at once. Perhaps what I should have done is just put a really thin layer of UV resin on it, smooth it out over top of the washi tape, and then cured it. There was a lot of UV resin on here, so that again could have contributed to the fact of why it pulled away from the wood. Anyway, uh, lesson learned. I won't ever use removable double-sided tape again for something like this. I thought it would be okay, and it wasn't sharing that point with you. The other thing that I noticed was there, I don't want to call it a wax covering on the washi tape, but there definitely is some sort of protective coating they've put on it. And one thing I found with UV resin while I've been working with it, more it than, than two-part epoxy, is the fact that it'll pull away from the edges if something is too glossy underneath. And what I did with, because it didn't matter, this was, had the removable double-sided tape under it as well. And it actually started to pull away even before I put the UV resin on it. Again, don't use it. <laughs> I knew I could play with this even more. And what I did was, and I can't remember if it was top or bottom, but I actually sanded the washi tape down a little bit. It gave it an distressed look, which is totally cool if that's something you're looking for, but it may not be. And because of that, when I sanded it, it did help it to keep around the edges. I, I can't, I may not be able to get the, the glossiness, but it did hold around the edges 
better instead of it you know constantly pulling itself away from the edges before I did that. The other thing I decided to do was Mod Podge. A lot of people use this when they're doing decoupage and I thought it's been recommended that you use a matte Mod Podge when you're doing your decoupage and I can't remember if they've told me why to do that but anyways matte's supposed to be what you use. So I thought okay fair. What if I put some matte decoupage over top of the washi tape and then put UV resin on it? And that seemed to help that I just, that was, I'm pretty sure I did that on the bottom. And once it had dried and I only put on one thin layer of the matte Mod Podge, I know that they talk about how long you have to let that set. If you're using it for decoupage and it's four weeks for what I'm doing, I'm putting a thin layer on it. So within a couple of hours and I went on and I put UV resin again. Oh, you can just see it there. You can see it's matte here and then the gloss here from the UV resin and that helped keep the UV resin down around the edges. So another idea of how you can do it. If you don't want to be sanding and you'd want to use a really fine grit if you're going to sand something like washi tape so you don't take off too much of the design. You have to be really careful and maybe only go around the edges because that's where it's pulling away from. In the center it's spreading out so that's not as big of a deal. Anyway, I wanted to share those two tips with you and really what not to do. I did another piece and here with this one I used the permanent and it did not pull away. I also though was very careful when I was putting my UV resin on to put a really thin layer on and then build it up from there. Now this piece, I don't know if you can see in here, but I did use sandpaper on this. I'm trying to, I don't know how. Anyway, I did use sandpaper on it and it took off some of the pattern. It took off too much and that's why I encourage you not to go too heavy when you're using sandpaper on this. I don't mind how it looks. Um, uh, hopefully you can see it. I don't mind how it looks but again do you want a distressed look or do you want it to look as fresh as it did when it came out of the container. Now the other side I think what I did with that is I put the matte Mod Podge on it first. I let it set and then I put thin layers of UV resin and cured it through each of it. And this one came out fairly decently. I, I'm pleased with the overall result of this uh, wood blank and how it's staying together, which is beautiful. It's what you want. And the fact that I have a distressed look on one side and on the other side, it looks, it looks crisp because I didn't sand this at all. Now, that got me into what do I do with the ribbon I have? Again, I took a wood blank and I put using my permanent double sided tape on the wood blank. Then I put and laid out the ribbon on top of it. And on this one, again, you know, you got to be careful when you're dealing with a fabric because the UV resin, like anything, will soak into it. And I ended up getting air bubbles first. I put way too much on. Again, got to be light with this stuff. And as a result of me trying to get things around the edges and whatnot, I actually, and you're not going to be able to see this, but it did pool underneath it and push it up a bit. So I thought, okay, again, lesson learned. Make sure you're sealing your ribbon. I know with uh, two-part epoxy when it comes to putting pictures and the like into it. They always recommend that you seal it because of the coloring could come out of the picture depending on how good your printer is and the paper you're using. It's also possible for the resin to penetrate through. In this case it is a porous material so the resin did get underneath it. It did push it up. As soon as I saw it doing that I basically threw it under to cure it to get it to stop and then put a little bit more of UV resin on top of it. And if you weren't really paying attention, you might not notice that. But 
it was very clear to me and it's like okay natalie you knew it was porous that should have been your first clue not to do this i've done the other side and for this side i actually put a thin coating of mod podge on it i'm going to recommend that if you do that you do it once you let it dry completely and then do another thin coat i only did the one and I actually got a few air bubbles on this side. It much better because there was something to stop the UV resin from going through the material this time, but not quite enough because I was still getting the odd air bubble coming up through the material or on the material. It wasn't, it wasn't um, covered well enough. So I'm going to say at least two coats. I'm not sure you would need three, but I'm going to recommend two not heavy layers and make sure that the Mod Podge is dry, completely dry before you put the second coat on or at least leave it probably for 24 hours. Again, I'm playing. I'm not leaving things as long as I would normally do if I was making um, true pieces that I was wanting to sell or I was giving away as a gift. I would definitely give the cure time in between. So this one turned out much better. I do have a few air bubbles on this side, not near what I had. And if I really wanted to get crystal clear with this, I could sand that down to remove the air bubbles and then put one final coat of UV resin on it. I'm not going to with this piece because I'm just, I'm just testing. I'm just playing and giving you some insight on what not to do and things to do in order to have something like this work out even better. I think these look sweet. I love having the flower pattern on these and I had almost thought maybe I don't want to stick at this. Not quite cute. You know, earrings, if I can get this hung right. Back in the eighties, big earrings were all the rage. And I think sometimes today they're still the rage, but I had actually thought maybe cutting it in half would make it make more sense as an earring, but you could, as a keychain, you could put it on for a keychain if you want something that big. It's up to you what you decide to do with something like this. I have some bigger coasters like this that I'd actually like to use either the washi tape or the ribbon on so that you could have it as a coaster. So I'm looking at doing something like that coming up soon. Anyway, the last thing I want to point out that I did on this piece, and again, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it, but in where the pink is, trying not to touch because this isn't fully cured. Um, I used a, I used a UV resin that isn't as good a quality as the J Dictionary or the Let's Resin. And I did that because I have it and I want to use it up. Anyway, on the pink here and in the pink of the flowers, I used which is a product that I just got recently is by Ranger, the Dilusions Diamond Dust. So I just touched it on in spots. And then I also used another of the Dilusions for the purple flower over here, just to give it uh, a bit of sparkle if you, you got to turn it. And if you could see it in person, you'd be able to notice it better. Anyways, I just tried to doll up my piece a little bit. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to point out some things not to do. Please don't do them. I've shown you what the end result's going to be and some things you can do and maybe even take things a step further, especially if you want to work with a material to seal it properly first in order to not have air bubbles occur when you put your resin on it, whether it's UV resin or a two-part epoxy. And it would be more important if you were working with a two-part epoxy because it's going to take up to 24 hours to cure. And in that time, if the resin can get underneath, you're going to get more air bubbles. And I don't think you're going to really be able to stop that from happening. At least with UV, you can get torch them and then cure it right away. So that'd be the difference. Anyway, that is all I've got to share with you as far as my escapades go and working with washi tape and working with ribbon. I'm constantly looking for new ideas. 
I'd love your suggestions if you have any. Comment below, like, subscribe, check out my Facebook page, Being Intentionally Creative. I will post pictures of this separately there. I hope you're having a wonderful day with whatever creative endeavor you're getting up to. It's been great talking to you again. Thanks for coming. Have a great day. Bye for now.